Hello everyone, Trophy100, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to do another video in my series about Barolo. So those of you who follow my channel know that I am um, interested this year in a couple of regions. Just picked out a couple just to kind of deep dive into them a little bit more. Um, my preferred areas of drinking are really Bordeaux and Burgundy. Those are places that I feel more comfortable with. But I like to expand my knowledge. So um, there's a couple of areas that I've kind of focused on this year. One is Barolo. And um, I'll have the, my initial video on Barolo at the end of this video. But I'm just getting into it um, in terms of just getting a little bit more uh, knowledge about it. And over the last little while, I think I've drank like 30 bottles of Barolo. So I feel now that um, I'm no longer really a beginner in Barolo and maybe like an intermediate. And so I thought I'd just kind of um, share with you and viewers and I hope you enjoy this journey with me because I'm just learning and I this is how I learn. Um, I kind of get some knowledge about the region and then I just drink through it and kind of try to make my own uh, interpretation of uh, and make sense of things. I think it's really important to um, get some education and read about other things but I also think it's really important to drink for yourself because it's your own palate and you come to your own understanding. So let's kind of just recap um, a little bit about Barolo. Um, there are 11 villages in Barolo but really there's only five that are really um, produce most of the Barolo. Barolo, Castelgion, Faletto, Saralonga d'Alba, La Mora and Monteforte d'Alba. And of those, La Mora is the one that produces the most. So if you look at those five regions, there's basically two distinguishing uh, valleys. One is the Saralunga Valley, which is comprised of Castelgion, Faletto, Saralunga Alba, and Monteforte Alba. And those, generally speaking, are going to be, the soil type is going to be sand and limestone, there are going to be more intense wines, Barolos, that have need a little bit more time. Then you have the Central Valley, um, which is comprised of La Mora and Barolo. So there's a village in Barolo called Bar Barolo. So that's kind of confusing too, but that's the world of wine. And those soils are typically clay, and they're going to have softer and fruitier wines. I also will mention that Castel Gion Valletto is really a mix of the two soils. So based on that, I would think that the, uh, and Castel Gion is, a, I think, a very small region. But I would say based on that, I would think that that's going to be um, a little bit uh, more uh, expensive wines because they have the best of both worlds. So the other thing is that there's these, it's, Barolo is nice because it's, it's very similar to Burgundy in terms of its makeup. It's, uh, you know, you can think of the region as the village and then you can think of these 11 villages as maybe premier crew sites or regions. And then they have these, what they call MGAs, which are sub-regions or specific vineyards. There's about 150 or 160 of them. And so those will also have its specific characteristics. So you can kind of look at it like Burgundy, and, um, but it's even easier because there's fewer um, regions in Barolo, obviously, than Burgundy. So the other thing I've been playing with uh, is altitude. And what I'm finding from my research is that lower altitudes supposedly have richer, more tannic, more alcoholic Barolos. And higher altitude Barolos are, um, because they're higher up, they're probably going to ripen uh, slower. They're going to have higher acidity. They probably have more concentrated flavors. They're going to be mineral driven. They might be a little bit more austere. They have a lighter body and more intense aromas. And my hypothesis is that most of the time, if you look at the altitude, if you have a higher altitude, not always, but if you have higher altitude, generally speaking, those are going to be your top end uh, expensive Barolos. So as I've been drinking through uh, these Barolos, I've kind of discovered a couple of things. One of the things I've discovered, and maybe uh, people who are more experienced will say that's so elementary trophy, but that's why I called myself a beginner at the time. But um, a lot of Barolos are what they call blends. 
And so they are blended from different villages. Uh, they are not um, from a specific MGA or a specific vineyard. They are not from a specific village. They're from a number of villages. And in fact, that's mostly how Barolos were produced for many, many years. So this idea of um, you know, getting Barolos from a certain site, um, it's, some wineries have done it for many years, but most wineries, it's a fairly recent phenomenon. And it's kind of like single malt scotches, right? Single malt scotches are really um, only popularized probably in the last 20, 30 years before everything was blend. And so that is how it mostly goes in Barolo. So the, most Barolos actually are blends and you can get really good um, value for Barolo blends. The reason being is that Barolos by nature must be aged at least three years. So you're always getting a very good quality Barolo and that's why you don't see really, really cheap Barolos like $15 Barolos. That's, it takes a long time to produce the Barolo. So generally speaking, what I'm finding is those Barolos are harder to make generalizations of, but when you have a blend, I think like any type of blend, you're gonna be able to um, weigh out the bad, good and the bad. So I would say in bad vintages, maybe it's safer to drink Bar uh, blends in restaurants when you don't know anything about Barolo, maybe it's safer to drink a blend. Uh, Barolo. And how can you tell if it's a blend Barolo? It will say on the label basically just Barolo. It won't have, um, you know, uh, Sierra Leone Dalba. It won't have the specific uh, vineyard. So if it just says Barolo, that just means it's probably um, grapes from anywhere in Barolo, which doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It probably means it's not as um, characteristic, but it doesn't mean it's bad. And in fact, it could mean it's very good. Um, there's some very good blends uh, out there. Uh, an example is, is this white, Masolino is a, is a blend. And so it's a very, very good blend. But uh, having said that, it's a blend of wines from a specific region in Sierra Linga Dalba. Okay, so let's go through some of the blends that I've had um, in the last little while. So Paolo Scavino, I've had two vintages of Paolo Scavino in the last little while. And Paolo Scavino, I think is a very quality producer if you ever find it. I really like their wines. Um, they take um, from all from seven different villages, so um, it's a really good blend. Um, I had a blend from San Silvestro, which is also from all eleven villages, so it could be anywhere in Barolo. Um, it's very affordable, and I think that's the other thing. When you have these blend Barolos, you can bring down the cost because you know you can take your um, grapes from any uh, village or anywhere in Barolo, so that helps. Um, Pio Cesare is a blend. A lot of people don't know that. Pio Cesare is a great uh, wine. They also produce, I think, uh, village specific and MGA crew wines. Um, but they take from, um, I think, a couple of places, a couple of different uh, um, villages. Uh, Fijli, uh, I've had that wine. I had in 2010, which is really good. Damilano, uh, Marchese di Barolo. In particular, I had their 64 and 67, and those were blends. But don't tell me that that's gonna stop you from drinking a 1964 or 67 Barolo. And in fact, I think that's what you'll see uh, a lot of times that the older Barolos will be blends. Let's talk a little bit about the wines I've drank in the specific regions. So let's start with Sierra Leone Dalba. So I've drank in their um, quite a few wines um, of them. One of them is Masolino. So Masolino is a blend of grapes within Sierra Longa Dalba. And so this is kind of where it gets confusing. So again, you have Barolo, which has 11 villages. So a wine like Palo Scavino that just says Barolo, they can take grapes from anywhere in those 11 villages. Now you have um, Masolino. And if you look at their bottle, it actually says on the bottle, Sierra Longa Dalba. That means they can take any grapes from anywhere within Sierra Longa Dalba. Still a great wine. This does not, whether it's a blend, whether it's a, from a certain village, does not necessi necessitate whether it's a good or bad wine in terms of quality. All it, it says is that it's much more um, specific in terms of the character or the terroir of that place. So, um, Maybe for like wine geeks, it's important, but for us as consumers, if you're just interested in drinking a good wine, it's irrelevant whether it's 
a blend or it comes from a certain village or it comes from an MJ. And in fact, you probably want to just choose the cheapest, which would probably be a blend uh, from all different villages. So the other ones I've had, I've had site-specific or M-site or specific vineyards from Sierra Leone Alba. Again, it doesn't necessitate what it's good or bad. It just necessitates it's more much, it could be more characteristic. So if you drink from a certain region, you might um, know, kind of have uh, idea which ones you've had. So for instance, I drank the 06 uh, Battisiolo from uh, Bricolina. I also drank a Rivetto um, Bricolina wine and both of them, different vintages are light. So to me, that would mean probably Bricolina is a MGA that I do like. Um, I had a Mirafore um, Barolo from this region, um, which didn't score as high. I had a Bodana, Luigi Bodana, uh, wine, which was at 350 meters, which was pretty good. Um, I've had the Masolino, the Saralonga d'Alba, which I thought was young, but very good. I scored at 93 points at 16 vintage, but I think it's young. And I've also had their Parafada, which is from their MGA, the 2012, which I didn't like as much. So this is an example where Parafada is actually probably a more expensive wine because it's specific to a certain vineyard. But actually, I liked the Masolino the, you know, kind of more generic, the Sarah Lango Dalba more. And so that's where you, it, it price, price I think is uh, controlled by, you know, specific, because if you can only um, take the drapes, grapes from Bricolina and Parafata, it probably costs more to produce. But that doesn't mean it's better. Uh, it, what does better mean? It doesn't mean that. It means that it is uh, more specific. It's more characteristic to that region. Um, I had the Bruno Giacosa uh, Filetto, and I had that about a couple of years ago, uh, the 2013, and I didn't like it that much. It was okay. It was 90 points in my books, but again, that could be it's just young, and I probably, maybe I didn't know what I was looking for, and I've had Fontaine Frida, the Vina La Rosa. So in general, I've enjoyed the uh, wines from this region, but in general, what I found is correct. Um, based on my research that you probably need a little age on this. So the one that was um, the Badia Solo that I drank from 2006, I really enjoyed. So probably a little age on these wines is important. Um, next, we go to Montforte d'Alba, which is another Saralunga Valley um, village. So from there, I've had um, Battisolo, the 2010 Bofami. I think I did a, 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 a um, review of that, and so I'll put that at the end of this video. Then I had two from Conterno Fatino, which um, the 10 and the 18 vintage, I both scored them 91 points. And so again, that tells me um, that for Conterno Fatino, it doesn't really matter what vintage, it's fairly uh, consistent what I, what I feel about the wine. I also had a um, Gagliardo uh, from the Castelletto region. And again, this it's hard to generalize and that's why you have to drink each wine because uh, Caterno Fiatino was a, a higher altitude wine than Gallardo, um, which, but I still enjoyed the Gallardo Castelletto a little bit more. So it's hard to say. Um, and again, that's why you have to drink through everything to kind of know your own taste. Castel Gian Filetto, I haven't drank many wines from there. That's more because I think it's hard to find wines from there. Uh, but the wines that I have had are from Mascarello. So I did have a Mon Previto a couple of years ago, it was at 05, and again, I thought it was tight. Um, and then I just recently had another Moscarello, um, which was younger, but I thought it was great. So it could be my chase palette change, it could be that I, I was looking for different things, but um, to me, I still have a, I need more understanding of that region. Likewise with Lamora, it's funny because I drink very little Lamora, even though it's where most wines are produced. And I think the rationale there is because, um, generally speaking, I do drink what we would call trophy wines or premium wines. The more entry-level wines, I think, come from Lamora, and that's why you don't, I don't drink as many of them. Um, but the one that I had, I did enjoy for the price. It was the San Silvestro Serra del Turchi. Um, it was a low, kind of 230 meters. Um, so I don't know if there are high altitude um, vineyards in Lamora. There should be, but I'd be interested in drinking them. 
I have drank quite a few from uh, the Barolo region. And um, again, this is confusing because the whole region is called Barolo, but then there's also a village in Barolo called Barolo. Um, the one that I really enjoyed was the um, couple of them. Actually, I enjoyed a couple of them. Inodi's um, Costa Grimaldi and then uh, Vara's uh, Brico della Viola. And so um, Brico della Viola is at 400 to 490 meters above sea level. So um, that kind of holds. And likewise, I had a Orello Settimo uh, Rocca della Nunziata, which is supposed to be a great wine vineyard. It was at 280 meters. I didn't like it as much. So um, don't know if that's the thing. Same thing. Um, I just had Kanubi. Now, Kanubi is the problem with Kanubi is it's a very famous region. Having said that, Kanubi is uh, fairly low in terms of the altitude, 250 meters. Um, but I think I can explain that because Kanubi is quite diverse and um, even though it has low, vin uh, low um, um, altitude, it has very diverse soil. So some, the first uh, experience I had with Kanubi, I didn't like it very much, but a recent Kanubi I had, it was the Charlo 07, I really enjoyed. Um, it had 93 points on it. Um, I also had, which I've reviewed, the Giacomo Boriono 203 Reserva. Um, I think with Reserva, it has to age, I think, six years. Really enjoyed that. That was a blend of, um, I think, four or five different MGAs within Barolo. And again, this is the confusion. You have um, Barolo, you have blends within a certain village, like Barolo, and then you have these specific vineyards like MGAs. And so, you know, as you're going through that, go, when you go to the liquor stores, go to the Barolo section and just go and test yourself and just go through each label. I do that a lot and just, hey, what does this mean or what is this? So for instance, um, this one, Massolino, says Saralunga Dalba. So that means that it's basically all the grapes are Saralunga Dalba, but it could come from any of the MGAs or vineyards in Saralunga Dalba. This one is Figli and it says Barolo and it says Vigna Ronda. So, uh, and it says Lamora. So to me, that would probably mean that uh, my guess would be, and I hope I'm right, so I don't look bad, but I would guess that Vina Ronda is a MGA in Lamora. And so this would be a specific wine. And my guess would be this is a fairly expensive wine because um, probably more expensive than the Massolino because Massolino would be uh, from anywhere within a village. This is a site specific, so it'd be harder to produce. Not that it's better, not that it's, uh, um, you know, better in terms of rating or better in terms of drinking, but it's probably more expensive. And, uh, you know, the vintage is great, 15 and 16, so both these are great vintages. So I think that's really important to kind of go through in your mind. Um, the next region that I've drank, which is not a region of, uh, that produces a lot of wine, but it's called Grisan Cavour. And why I drink that region is because I drink La Spinetta. So La Spinetta, I've drank their Campe, which comes from Grisan Cavour. And I've enjoyed both vintages of them, although they were older vintages, 01 and 05. Um, the Barolo Campe, the, the vineyard is at 280 meters above sea level, but I still enjoyed it. So I don't think I can say um, that, you know, just because something is altitude is higher, I enjoy it. But I think um, there are these general tendencies that you can make and that helps you when you distinguish a wine. And I will note that of all these wines, I think I've drank like 30 wines, 30 Barolos over the last little while. Um, I don't think I've rated any of them 95 points. Um, so that means I haven't got to, yes, I don't think I've got to a wine where I thought, wow, this is the pinnacle or this is classical Barolo. And that's uh, probably correct because most of the wines that I've drank have been younger wines. So you expect that, that they're probably not in their prime yet. So I'll note that the Massolino, this wine that I'm here having here is 95 points wine spectator but it's so young. So my rating of the wine was 93 points. I don't doubt that eventually it'll get to 95 points, but it's just not in its drinking window at this point. And so um, I'm still looking for Barolos, which will kind of 
uh, really uh, challenge me in terms of, oh, that's a 95 point wine. So I will be over the next little while looking at auction, trying to find a little bit older Barolos and um, some of the top producer Barolos. Um, because I just want to continue to try. I think I have a fairly good idea now of what I like and um, kind of the lay of the land in Barolo. And um, the purpose of these videos is to really just um, have viewers kind of share with me the uh, wine experience and to um, give you confidence that it's never too late to learn and um, there's no shyness about learning. So. I put myself um, out there because if I'm wrong in these videos, everyone who reviews them knows I'm wrong. But it's kind of nice to be able to have form hypothesis or form thoughts and as you get new information, uh, integrate those. And to me, that's the fun process that um, for me to go back even to my own videos to look at what I've said before and say, oh, that was not correct and why that wasn't correct. Or, what knowledge, um, how I was thinking about things. Um, you don't have to know all and be all about wine. It's a process. And I think to me, that's the exciting part to share that process with people and other people may have uh, be able to add to that based on their experience. So that's why I do these videos. Um, I hope it's useful to people and I hope it gives you a deeper understanding of Barolo, not just this one has 95 points, this one has 93 points. That really doesn't teach you anything about your palate. I think going through um, and drinking different regions, figuring out what regions you like, figuring kind of trends that you see in how you drink, um, I think is much more useful um, than to say, you know, Robert Parker rated this 95. Robert Parker doesn't have your palate. Uh, Robert Parker is not you. Hope this has been useful. Until next time, happy drinking.